How's it going guys? Chris Calder here with uh, part 11 of my Rapid Composer tutorial series. This one's going to cover the phrase editor and it goes right along with a chapter in the newly revised manual. So uh, here is the phrase editor of course and we're going to talk about how to make phrases uh, by drawing the notes in with the mouse and also MIDI input. My buffer settings of my audio interface are kind of high because when I um, do screencasts like this uh, sometimes like the audio glitches out so so I'm hitting the key, my uh, MIDI keyboard and there's a slight delay but it's only for the purpose of this tutorial series so when I do when I record the phrase with MIDI input it's gonna be a little off and I'm gonna have to kinda quantize the notes but again it's just slow computer that kinda thing so first we're going to make a phrase with uh, the mouse basically drawing the notes in just like I talk about in the manual so uh, obviously we're in the key of C major and the chord C major just to make things really easy and in the manual what I do is I create you know this note that note and then that note so basically it's E and G and then C it's an alternating pattern it basically sounds like this okay so all it is is basically just how John Lennon plays Imagine when he wrote it That's kind of what I want uh, the phrase to be. Um, we're just going to draw it in manually. So if you know a little bit of music theory, you know that it's straight eighth notes and it's alternating between the third of the chord and the fifth of the chord down to the root. So all I did, you know, again, I'm just going to re uh, repeat this process. I double clicked the E, I double clicked the G. I have my snap two at one half, which means eighth notes. I have my grid set to quarter, and you can see the those are 16th note divisions. You could see the ruler markings. You know what I'm saying? So it's real easy. So when you double click, it just automatically creates a perfect eighth note, perfect length. You know. So I double clicked E and I double clicked G and then I double click C. And to make things easy, to save time, we're just going to copy and paste this over. And then we're going to paste these two. You know what I mean? I'm holding Alt and I'm dragging with the left mouse button, and I instantly created, you know, duplicates of, you know, the thing I made. So here's what it sounds like. Okay. So that's how you make a custom phrase with the mouse. And you know what I'll do is I'll just go Imagine, and then I'll probably put it in a group called. I like all my custom phrases to be organized like this, basically custom phrases and then slash piano. So in the in the phrase browser you'll see custom phrases a, a category and then underneath you'll see a subcategory called piano and, and all the phrases are inside like that and so there you go and then you just save it and then it says phrase already exists with that name because I already made this before uh, do you want to overwrite it sure okay so now it's, it's that easy now I'm gonna do the same thing with the MIDI keyboard input so let's see all right, I'm just going to make a, whoops, that's my MIDI keyboard being stupid with the mod wheel. All right, there we go. So I'm going to make a, a similar phrase, but I'm going to kind of add more to it. So I'm going to add left hand, and I'm going to add right hand. So I'm going to be like this. So I'm going to do like a pattern like that, because, you know, it's obviously faster to play it than it is to mouse it in. So I'm going to make a simple phrase, you know, with my MIDI keyboard. I'm going to kind of make it like Imagine, but a little bit different. So I'm just going to go, I don't know, I'm going to practice something real quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll do something like that. Okay, so you uh, highlight the metronome icon, and then you click this. So it gives you a count in, and you can come in whenever you want. But if you don't play anything within like three to five seconds or something, it's going to uh, stop and, and RC is going to say no phrase was recorded. Okay, so you got plenty of time to kind of you know get ready. So, so I'm just going to improvise a phrase and see what happens. Okay, and then I don't even have to stop because um, it'll automatically stop. Now all these are absolute notes, okay? Any any time the phrase editor shows orange notes, that means they're absolute. So what we have to do first is we have to fix the timing. So what I do is highlight all the notes, right click, quantize to. Half beat is going to be eighth notes, quarter beat, sixteenth notes, eighth beat, you know, obviously. 
So I'm just since this is basically kind of an eighth note pattern, I'm just gonna do half beat and see how see how it aligns. Okay, looks pretty good. Everything looks to be Yep, everything's perfectly tight. Yeah, my playing was kinda sloppy because again the uh the MIDI controller, you know, I'm screen casting, so my ASIO buffer is, is much higher, so there's a noticeable latency when I hit the key, but it's only so I don't get glitchy audio. So uh this is the what the phrase sounds like. Now notice sometimes if you go slightly over the the bar or, or the beat, uh, the quarter note beat, it'll say length nine, even though I want it to to be a two measure phrase. So all you gotta do is just kind of chop that that last piece off, and now it's eight uh, eight beats long, two measures. It's basically the same phrase. It could be a one measure phrase if I want it to be, but you know whatever. We'll just make it two. So now the most important thing you have to do after you're happy with the sound of this is you highlight everything, you right click, convert selection to relative form. And now uh, the notes are green and you can see they, they all fit in the scale. And you know, right here, all this stuff, I, I don't fully understand what this stuff means just yet, but it's so powerful. Um, so all it's doing is it's saying this is two octaves below that's still, you know, two octaves below. That note's one, because that's the octave of that. And then up here, it's going to be an octave zero, because I was just playing like a C triad. You know what I mean? So the whole thing is, you know, basically right and left hand together. It's like a right left hand pattern. I'm doing kind of like a little root fifth root movement right here in the left hand. And I'm just playing straight triads in, in the right. So, you know, this obviously doesn't sound anything like the phrase we moused in, but this is more complicated, so this is going to take time to make, so that's why I said it's just easier to record it uh, live MIDI. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll listen to it again. Okay, we're going to call this tutorial phrase. We're going to put it again in my favorite location, which is custom phrases, piano, and... There we go. And if you want to double check that it's saved, you know, click it again. It'll it'll give you a prompt saying a phrase already exists with that name. Do you want to overwrite it? Click OK. OK, so now we have a blank composition. So you open your phrase browser, and we might have different stuff, you and I. So here's tutorial phrase. We could preview it from here. Sounds, sounds exactly like what we did. And I hit preview uh, twice accidentally. Sorry about that. And then all we do is we highlight what track we want it on. We could hit F, you know, to fill with selected uh, phrase like that. Or we can hit, or we could just drag it in manually. So we could do that, put it right here. Now notice how the phrase is two bars, but the chord progression changes to the four, the four chord. So it's going to intelligently transpose to match the chord, as Rapid Composer does so well. Okay, and the cool thing is, if we change these to minor chords, we'll get the same results. The phrase will obviously conform to what we did. Okay, so we're going to fill it, and we're going to listen to it over minors and majors combined. The cool thing is a basic progression like this, which only uses triad notes, uh, you know, majors, minors, suspended uh, second, suspended fourth. We can change this to D sus two, can change this to E sus four, change this to F sus two, change this to A sus two. So check it out. So this phrase will work over these too. So that's basically how the phrase editor works. You could mouse it in, like we did with the Imagine phrase, or we could play it live with our MIDI keyboard. So, you know, again, it's just wise to, uh, just like I did before, you know, I, I right-clicked, I quantized to, you know, half beat, eighth notes, and then I converted the orange notes to, you know, um, to relative form instead of absolute. So good stuff. That's pretty much the basics of the phrase editor. If you're wondering what all these settings are, um, they're complicated, like I said, maybe I'll do another video later, but we're just trying to get all these done for the Monday uh, launch date, for the major update. 
So, um, but uh, all these things, you know, octaves, note offset, semitones, scale steps, note kind, chord, scale, bass, or absolute, note mapping, scale notes plus semitones, chord notes plus semitones, chord notes plus scale steps, but use semitones for harmonic intervals, chord notes plus scale steps. This is where it gets real complicated and crazy, and this is also important. Uh, cycle note when chord note index is out of range, or ignore note when chord note index is out of range. Um, most of the time when you make custom phrases, it's either going to be CT or IT. Like IT is for like the more complicated chords, you know, like if you have um, C7 instead of like C major, you know, it'll like remove the seventh chord. Um, and as written in the manual, you know, again, this is just complicated stuff. This is like one of the most complicated aspects of the program. Um, the note indexes, see where it says CH and 0, CH2, CH0? Note index 0 is the root of the chord. Note index 1 is the third of the chord, as you can see right there. So we have 0, that's C, and then uh, 1 is E, that's the major third of the chord. And note index 2 is the fifth of the chord. If you have note index 3, it's the next uh, note in line that's important. You know, for example, C7, note index 3 would be B flat, okay? If you have, you know, like C added 9, again, note index 3 would be D in the C added 9 chord. It's kind of just music theory stuff. So, and then if you have a note index of 4, that's going to be like a 5 note chord, all right? So you have your triad, and then you'll have your 7th, and you might have an extra ninth, you know, note in there. So if you have maybe... I don't know, let's see, like C minor 9 or something, it would be C, E flat would be note index 1, um, G would be note index uh, 2, and then you'd have B flat would be note index 3, and then you would have D, which would be note index 4. So depending on the complexity of what you make, you know, all those note indexes have something to do with the you know, how the phrase is interpreted and all that stuff. Again, it just gets real complicated. We try to give you guys like a lot of custom phrases that work over basic major and minor harmony and sus harmony. Um, but, you know, if you're into the jazz kind of stuff, you know, you might want to tweak your own phrases. Like I said, we're going to we're we're definitely going to come out with another video later explaining the phrase editor in more detail but for now i think this definitely should get you guys started if you want to make your own custom phrases so uh thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next vid